Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a blue poppy. Uh, we are going to be using acrylic paints and I'll be showing you step by step how to do it all the way through. If you've done one of my other large flower paintings, this one is very similar in difficulty, so it shouldn't be too hard. I've got my husband Mark with me today. Hey there, everybody. He'll be man and chat for us while we do our live show. So let's get started. Okay, so I've prepped a 9 by 12 inch uh, gesso board with a coat of uh, dark gray. This is half and half ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Makes this nice warm blue uh, gray color. And I didn't add any white to it, so it's straight ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And I just covered the entire back for the beginning of our tutorial here. And then um, I'm going to use white chalk to uh, draw this out for you. I've already, you know, pre-drawn it, it just to save me some time, but I'm going to go over it with you, you know, kind of how so you can do your own drawing. Um, let me go over our palette really quick while I'm thinking about it. We've got burnt sienna, burnt umber, carbon black, not sure if we're going to need that, uh, ultra unbleached titanium, titanium white, quinacridone magenta, dioxazine purple, this color is called light ultramarine blue. That'll be kind of the main base color for our flower, but if you don't have that, you can just use ultramarine blue and white. That's all it is, it's just pre-mixed. Uh, this is ultramarine blue, this is thalo blue green shade, yes, and thalo green yellow shade, <laughs> cadmium yellow medium, and yellow oxide. Um, not sure we're gonna need the green yellows, but I thought I'd just kind of have them out just in case we needed to add a pop of color. I haven't done the example yet. Uh, ahead of time so I thought we would just kind of work it out while we go <laughs> be an interesting show <laughs> nothing like painting something for the first time live right <laughs> okay so I started out by kind of figuring out how large I wanted the center of the flower and then sort of trying to make sure that I had the right size so that the the petals would all kind of fit so this one, the um, on a 9 by 12 inch, uh, the center was about 3 finger width or so. And this little part here is about 2 finger widths. So you can start by kind of doing a cone shape right in the center and then round it off at the bottom. And then the top part of it is only going to show a little bit. There's going to be kind of an oval shape, kind of fringe of... Um, what are these little stamen? I don't know what they're called, but anyhow, the center of the flower has these little ruffly uh, thingies coming out of it. And ruffly thingies, that's the technical term. <laughs> Hashtag flower facts. <laughs> and the, uh, this side of it is going to be cut off because of the angle that we're looking at it. So we're not going to see it full on straight down. So uh, it's kind of more of a squished uh, oval shape and it's right up next to the top of the cone at the top and then this part down here is about a thumbs width or so away from that center uh, and it kind of just gets gradually closer to it as you come up around like that and then these are going to have like the little spoke uh, things coming out all the way around kind of leading towards the center like that and then if we kind of use this as our uh, axis or whatever you're going to just create these spokes of your petals right and they are all going to point straight down into that center of your flower that's really important to remember uh, as long as you do that then you won't have any petals that look like they're kind of uh, you know wonky and if there are different sizes and shapes than mine then it won't really matter as long as you've got them all kind of pointing in the right general direction all right so I started out with this one I guess this is kind of our main one off to this side and kind of come up this way and the tip of it is going to kind of like if you did a straight line through the center of it the tip of it is going angling right out towards that corner there so that's where you kind of round it off and then wiggle it back in and around back down pointing towards the center then this one is coming out and back in and it is Wiggling in and coming in like that. And really this is kind of a dry, diagonal line almost pointing towards the middle of the canvas. So if you use the middle here 
and the middle here is your guide line. This, these two petals are going to be kind of creating this diagonal line between those two spots. That'll kind of help you keep them from getting too big, but this one is actually going to go way past the center. So it's going to wiggle down and come out um, well past the center and then angle back in like that. Then the one here is going to just be this little tiny guy that's kind of peeking out right there. And then there's another one. Remember, kind of, it kind of helps me sometimes to just start at the middle and sort of uh, do my line and then start the line sort of where I want it so that I know that it's going to make sense. This kind of come out this way. I think it's even farther out than I drew it. Like this. And about the middle, uh, a little bit past the middle of the center, actually. See now, this one kind of comes in around like that. So just kind of past that center mark there. And then this one kind of curves underneath that one. Comes out, it's actually a little bit farther down, but I kind of ran out of room at the bottom here. If you have a square canvas, it might bring this petal out a little bit farther. And back up and around, and again, making sure that this is pointing back down toward the center there. And then this one is going to curve in close to this, and then it's going to do a diagonal line this way, up, whoop, up here, and about the halfway mark it's going to kind of start to curve back in, and then curve back around and in like that. This one here in the middle is right at the center top point there, it kind of goes right up against the edge of the canvas and then comes back around and dips in, so sort of like a diamond shape. And this one is curving in like that, kind of meets up with this. And then this one is just curving around like that. And we're done. Not too hard. And like I said, if you get yours a little bit different sized, you know, that's fine. One of the things that I did check was that um, from this edge of the center to this area here was about the same um, distance as to this petal. So, um... That way you can kind of know this one is actually farther out than this side. That makes sense. Okay, so that's all the drawing we're doing. You can put my truck away there. All right, well, thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate <laughs> it. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe. <laughs> what? Yep, Mark's just, ready to go. We're basically. just drawing it today, right? And then painting it, no? We're going to be painting. It's going to be a while. Spencer already came in and was like, how long is this one going to take? Because <laughs> he has to be off the internet while we're... <laughs> yeah. Spencer, if you're new to our channel, he's our soon to be 16-year-old. <laughs> so, <laughs> like and no internet equals like <laughs> just torture. Yeah, it's like, what am I going to do with myself? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And he doesn't have a car yet, so he can't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm wetting down my brush a little bit just to pick up. And I'm grabbing my number six filbert. It's kind of a, about a half inch filbert or so. And um, if you're interested in any of the materials that I'm using today, you can look down in the, the description box. If you click on the show more underneath the video, it'll pop down and it... Uh, tells you all kinds of information, my social media links and uh, Patreon and Teespring store and all that good stuff. So lots of, we've got t-shirts, we've got ugly Christmas sweaters going on right now. We're going to have some other Christmas uh, shirts soon, probably this week in the store. And then we've got, uh, we've got a red poppy shirt from the red poppy that we painted last year that's in this same large flower series. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out too. Okay, so I'm using the light ultramarine blue here and I'm just going to kind of since this is such a dark background I'm probably going to need a couple coats on here so I'm just going to lay in some of this color to begin with and pull down and as I put in these petals I'm always going to be pulling down towards the center in the direction that that the veins of that flower would grow and that way if we have any streaks it will look like we meant for them to be there and we'll let the paint do the work for us. Putting in some of those details. Okay. What, uh, what color blue is that again? 
This is the light ultramarine blue. It's it's a um, premixed color. It's ultramarine blue plus white, titanium white. So, uh, and it's probably I would say it's probably two parts to one part blue to white. I would guess it's quite a bit more. I think it's more white than blue in the mixture. I wonder if it says on the bottle. I'll look and see real quick. I think it's called light blue violet in the uh, Liquitex brand. No, it doesn't say how much of each one. Ooh, super chat. Alrighty. Oh. Yeah, we got a super chat from Johanna. Thank you, Johanna. And she has a request to see all the Stickman paintings we've done, but oh. I don't be easy because we got them stuck up on boards. Yeah, and there's like one that. over there. <laughs> Can you see it over there? It's just <laughs> right over there to the right. No? Um, okay. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Maybe Mark can get up and go look over there. I can't reach it from here. Or we can, we'll post it in the group, Joanna. All right. So I'm using the ultramarine blue. I added a tiny bit of doxazine purple. And I'm just going to pull up from the center with that color. And create a little soft blend. And it's blending into that wet paint that I had. And really, I'm not worried too much about getting this blend soft at this point where we're going to add more layers to it. But this is just our initial coat. And then let's use a little bit of that color mixed with our light ultramarine blue and do this next petal here. Just a little bit darker so that we see that this petal is in front. And I'm going right up underneath where that dark, uh, that center is going to be because I really need to have these petals going up underneath there. So we'll put in the center again later. Here again, streaks going in the direction that the petal grows. And then we'll pull down from this way. You can use the edge of your brush if you want to get a kind of a clean line along that top edge, but then just kind of go back and pull down from that so that it blends in with the rest. scale of uh, Stickman to, or Van Gogh to Stickman, <laughs> where would this be? Um, this one's probably a little bit more difficult than the Red Poppy because it's got more petals. So um, it's more on the lines of the Peony that we did. So it, um, I don't know what, uh, probably mid uh intermediate I would say not a not a first time painting but uh, and people have been doing really good with these flowers so you know I don't I just I think that as long as they kind of follow these uh, you know basic um, steps that uh, they've they've been very achievable paintings I think for a lot of people so I don't think they're quite as difficult as they might look. Yeah, we have like we have seen some amazing paintings posted in the Facebook mm -hmm. group, for sure. So I, I think that just follow the steps that you're giving them and take their time. And yep, and it'll just happen. Get get I, through the ugly stage. Exactly. Yeah, I think that that's the main thing that's kind of scary for most people is that may, kind of when you get about halfway through, it looks real. It's definitely in the ugly stage. It gets a little bit frustrating because you kind of think that you're doing something wrong. But if you just kind of push through it, keep on going through these first stages are just not going to look like much yet. Um, so 
you're just going to keep on pushing through and then you know once you get down toward the last few layers of paint then it starts to be like okay that makes sense <laughs> i think half of half of the struggle of getting through a painting is just that kind of head game that your mind plays with you trying to tell you that you're doing something wrong it happens to me too so it's just a normal process part of the painting process is kind of all right, so as I get around the hair, I went light, lighter along here, and then I kind of switched back to the darker colors. But I'm just using these this mixture of the ultramarine blue and, and dioxazine purple for the darker areas, and then the light ultramarine blue along the edges. I'll put a little bit more of the light color on this side. I'm just making sure that I'm pulling all these petal strokes are kind of pointing down in towards the center of the flower. So I'm going to clean that edge up a bit like that. And this one's actually pretty light up back here. Light's hitting it, I guess. Yeah, I had planned on maybe doing another, like a red poppy, but since we did one last year that was red, we've done, uh, we've done a white rose. The red poppy was the first one. I think the white rose might have been the second one. Then we did a uh, lily around Easter time, and that one was kind of whitish pink. We did a, like a purple pink I, uh, orchid. We did the succulent, the uh, green succulent for the Pantone color of the year. Greenery. And then, am I missing one? I'm trying to think of all the, the different large flowers that we've done, hun. Let's see, since I was paying close attention to what I was saying, you did a, a red flower and a white flower and a green flower, mm -hmm. and you did some other flowers, <laughs> and then you found some way to do a painting that didn't have flowers and you still put flowers on it. <laughs> Which one was that? I don't know, like every painting? <laughs> <laughs> remember what you said the other day you were like i said well you know when you're when you look at something they say hmm i wonder how that would look with flowers on it. <laughs> somebody asked me how i picked the the, the subject for my paintings mm -hmm. and mark said yeah hmm. she just kind of looks at stuff and is like oh that look with flowers on it <laughs> and then, you, then you paint it with flowers exactly <laughs> deer with flowers deer antlers with flowers a wreath so you got the white rose, the red poppy, orchid, lily. I feel like I'm forgetting one. I'm sure. You go way back. You got the Gerber daisy. Oh yeah, the Gerber daisy was probably our first. If we count that one, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it probably should be counted because it really was uh, in the same style. All right. Look at this darker blue purple here. Go right down in here for the dark, dark color. And then grabbing some of the lighter color here. If you kind of do it while it's wet, and just do it in small sections, you know. Don't try to cover the whole petal and then go back and blend it. Acrylics just won't let you do that. So you just kind of have to blend as you go. And go back and forth between the dark and light. Your, your brush will get all kinds of colors <laughs> all over it. But uh, it shouldn't be too hard. Do you want to include the finger painting one? Oh, no. Okay. No, but... That that was a large. You got the lily. That was a mum. Orchid. Uh, 
white rose, succulent. Yep. Okay, I may have gotten them all then. Right. So it's, it was overdue because I think the last one we did was the lily maybe. Was that, is that right? No, it's been a while since we've done one of these large flowers, so. The iris is way back in the day? Yeah, the iris was, uh, it, I, I haven't included it, but it was kind of in the same style. You could definitely make it, if you just picked one of the irises, it had two of them on there in the tutorial that I did. But uh, you could definitely just pick one and... Well, the, the lily was six months ago, and the peony was three months ago. Oh, the peony. That's the one I forgot. That's the one. Okay, so the peony was this the light pink. Thank you. That was the one I was forgetting. I couldn't remember. Oh, you're welcome. Peony was three months ago, so it hasn't been too bad. Yeah, so we've done one every every few months. We've been doing one all, all year long since last year. been a fun series. I really like these. And we're definitely planning on doing more. I've got all kinds of different flowers. <laughs> we haven't even touched, touched the surface. I definitely want to do a large daisy, another d large daisy, but like a full one this time. Uh, and then a red rose. And I don't know. we got lots of, lots of flowers we don't have to run out of. Sorry, I don't know that one. Every time. She does that every time lately. I could see her going. That's you our, saw her that's thinking. our, our what, machine who shall not be named. Exactly. From Echo. Or actually, that's the dot in my studio. She turns on and off our lights for us, but she seems to like to listen in on what we're saying during the shows <laughs> and pipe in. All. She's made an appearance every single show the last time. Last few weeks, what she, what I'm saying, that's making her think I'm saying her name, but it, <laughs> I definitely did not say her name. So funny. Okay, here's the unbleached titanium here. I hope I'm not going too fast. I'm, I'm really. Hopefully, you'd be able to see from what I'm doing here if I don't say every single time I'm picking up a color. But this one over here is a lighter color. Do that light ultramarine blue for this one. A little bit of the darker color just in the center. I just, we may need to get you a new spray bottle. Yeah, we do. That's my, that's my number two spray bottle. It, the first one conked out on me. So that was my backup spray bottle that I brought to classes, but I never really liked because it, okay, it, so the we'll sides go. got, I don't know why that the sides did that, <laughs> but it's been oh, like that. Oh, well then you need to open up, let some air in it. I'll no, it, I've open. tried that. It doesn't work. It, okay. It's just, it's done that ever since the, be the beginning. It's been like that. So it's kind of. All right, so we need a crowdfund for three dollars <laughs> <laughs> for a new, uh, new, new spray, spray bottle. bottle. Yeah, just one of those things I never think about when I'm out and about shopping. Oh, Luann's asking for large poinsettia. Oh, that would be a good one. We can do that for Christmas. When is Christmas? <laughs> Oh my goodness, I know, it's just, I, I wrote down all the things I wanted to do for Christmas and there's just not enough time to do all the fun projects I want to do. It's just, every year it seems like we get to November and then all of a sudden it's over, Christmas is over, you know. It just happens so fast. What are you doing? Mark's trying to fix my spray bottle. I told him it's not going to work. He's determined to make it work. I'm a man. Come on. Okay. He thinks he's going to undo. It's not 
going to work, is it? It's working. It's, it's working? working? Oh, really? Sort of. Kind of. You know it's not working. <laughs> okay. That, that works really good. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. I appreciate it. <laughs> you want me to tickle you while you're being No. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, honey. You're so, my hero. You fixed it. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, it's just killing you, isn't it? You're just like I know that can be fixed. I'll fix it somehow. So easy. All you have to do is blow air to it. I love you. <laughs> okay. Here's that dark color here. And then this one is a little bit lighter. So I'm just grab a little bit of that color there and just add a little bit of that light color. I mean, really with these petals, all it is is just these subtle contrast changes between these light and darks just to kind of make them look a little bit overlapped it doesn't have to be real drastic but just a little bit of a color shift will let your eye know that that one is resting on top got a lot of chalk on this once we get this painted i can go through and take off that chalk any extra chalk We've got now on, I, I was considering this before the show, um, you know, just kind of thinking over the colors I was going to use for these. Um, and I saw that on the example there, there's a real hard shadow on this lower petals here. Um, and I really prefer not to do that just because uh, it can be hard to make it not look artificial. I, it, these Sometimes the drop shadows like that, real hard shadows, um, can really make a painting um, look weird. And it makes can make it a little bit hard for your eye to discern what's actually going on with the painting. So generally, I just, well, with this one, I'm just going to kind of blend that out so that it's dark underneath there, but it's not going to have that hard edge. Now, if you want to put the hard edge in there, you can. More power to you. I'm just not going to do that mine we're just gonna kind of blend it out softly so that maybe the light was a little bit softer than it is in our photograph so I'm getting that lighter color and pulling back into that wet paint with the lighter color we'll kind of create the blend very lightly just skimming barely skimming the brush so that it, it will blend those two colors. If you press down too hard, it'll just lift off the darker color and you'll get a hard edge. So when you get to where these two colors are meeting, you just need to kind of do it very softly. And that's starting to dry there, so I don't want to mess with it too much. I'm going to grab that darker color and pull back this way with it. Okay, just going to let that be. And then this petal here is nice and bright. edge of my brush there and just kind of pull from the edge down once I get it on there. Okay. 
dark and kind of pull in this direction with that dark again, just like we did up here. Okay. And we're going to go back here and make this a lot brighter, but for now I'm just going to leave it because it's starting to dry. That lighter color. There's actually kind of a shadow right there with that darker that petal over the top. Put these in. Grab that lighter color and pull down with the lighter color over the top of that darker that we put in there. And this actually comes up over this one right up next to it, so like that. So we're already kind of halfway there. It looks pretty decent already. There's a lot of the gray streaking showing through though, so we've definitely got to give it a second coat. So I'm gonna take a damp paper towel here and just wipe off gently these outside edges, hopefully without pulling off any of the wet paint. Oxazine purple. Just kind of use that. Fill in that center. A little bit. Okay, I'm going to clean out my brush really well and then we're going to start using our highlight color. So I'm going to grab some white. And I'm going to mix a little bit of uh, quinacridone magenta, so we have a, like a light pink color to kind of pull from. And then we'll be mixing that with our our unbleached or our uh, light ultramarine blue as well. So we're going to make it kind of a light purple almost color. Pull off most of the extra there. And then I'm going to start right along that edge. It might be a little bit bright at first. Let me, we'll see. We might have to tone that down. Seems a little bit bright. Let me grab some of that light ultramarine blue. Blend back over that. If you've got it where it's not blending and it's just pulling that other color down, then you wipe your brush off, pick up the color you want to be in that area, and then pull from this direction up. Don't pull it back down, just push up with it. And that will help get those two colors to kind of blend. Push that lighter color back up where you want it to be. There we go. That's better. So I wiped in my brush off again and can do the same thing up here. Just kind of going back and forth over this. I did want some of this lighter color down in this one, so 
I'm going back and forth, always pointing it down where I want the brightest part or the the veins to point towards. So, and this brush is probably too big for this. This is probably why we're having a little more difficulty. I'm going to switch over to a smaller brush at this point. We'll get a little bit more control with our blending. Uh, let's use this one. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to use the number two bright. It may be too small, but we'll see. All right, so this has got a nice bright highlight right along there. The nice thing about using this smaller brush is that it can't hold as much paint, so it quickly kind of runs out of paint. You can just kind of blend out from where you originally put your paint down. And if you need to, you can kind of wipe it off and let it dry brush back and forth like this. There we go. Grab some more of that light blue pink color. We'll do some along this edge. Just refer to your photograph there. When you're kind of putting yours in, you can kind of see where those highlight areas are hitting. And I'm going to add a little bit of acrylic glazing liquid to my palette so I can... That'll just help the blending happen a little bit smoother for some of this. Give me a little bit more working time with this. Okay, so I'm going to go right up along that edge and then pull down. So I've got an area here that I need to transition those two colors. So I'm going to grab just that darker color and pull up. And it will pick up some of that lighter color, possibly. So you may have to um, wipe your brush off as you work if it gets too much of that lighter color. Just going to clean that edge off there. And then I did have a little bit of that darker ultramarine blue kind of middle, middle value color right in here. So I'm going to add some of that back in. You know what that means, Chat. boys and girls. Super Chat. Thank you. From Leanna. And she says, I found you almost a year ago. The first wow. painting I did was from one of your videos. Thank you so much for being a, such an inspiration. It has been an amazing journey since. That's amazing. That's what it's all about. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much, Leanna. Mm-hmm. So far, the Super Chat names have been fairly easy to pronounce, so I've been very fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using that edge of my brush and just kind of running some lines in here. This one, this flower has some veining in it, so I'm just kind of using that sort of darker color there to add just the suggestion of some veins in there. Karen would like to know how much pressure are you using right now to replace a darker color? Um, I'm pressing down pretty hard. Yeah. I'm 
I'm trying to get these this color to kind of go on. It's not one to lay down very smoothly, so this paint up here is a little tacky, so I'm going to have to be careful not to mess with it too much. Not to go up too high with this. Okay, there we go. What did I just do? There we go. I saw it on the camera before I saw it on the... Yeah, I thought thing. it was a spot on the... I did too. On the thing. I was like, hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure how that happened. I'll grab a little bit of the lighter color. And just blend over that. Yeah, this paint is acting kind of funky today. some of that lighter color. We'll add some more of it down here. There you go. I think I just need to add a little bit more water to my brush. I was just getting a little dry. Here we go. Yeah, it's going to be really important to just give a second coat to this entire flower. There's a lot of that gray peeking through. This will make it much more vibrant. You see how much, how much brighter these petals are than this one's down here. color there. Blend back through there. Here I'm kind of going light. I've added a little bit of water to my brush so it's kind of going on a little more, more smoothly. Seems to be blending a little bit easier for me. in that ladder color. Come right from the edge there and pull down. And I'm just going to kind of let it create streaks over the top of that wet paint. Like that. Got quite a bit of paint that I'm laying down right along that edge. Lay down, you know, fairly thick layer of paint, and then pull down from there. Just make sure you don't go too far with it, because you don't want to end up with a line of paint up there that won't blend because it's drying on you. So you just kind of have to do a small sections at a time. You can kind of blend it as you go. There we go. And this area up here has actually got some of the purple coming down. So add a little bit of that purple blue right there in the middle. Ultramarine blue. We'll come along 
this edge right here with it. And if you're having trouble getting it over the top of this edge, don't worry about that. You can always go back up and clean it, clean it up with with a little bit of white along that edge. So These are kind of curved a little bit right here, so I'm going to use a little bit of this lighter color and create some veins using that edge of my brush. Just pull it down over the top, pointing them down towards the center. There we go. coming down from the top, especially right there in the middle. And go nice and dark right there. Maybe getting sticky, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna stop. Let that dry, we'll put a little bit darker right there later. Okay. Uh, there's a little shadow right here. And I'm noticing that this... This petal is actually underneath this one. So we need to put a little bit of this color going right there. This is a light ultramarine blue here. Pretty much this petal is just mostly this color. Just giving it a second coat. And there is a little bit of purple darker color right along the edge right here. Pulling back from this center towards it to kind of blend those two together. Bit of that darker color again. Pull down. You know, just a matter of balancing the two and kind of overlapping them until you get a good blend between the two colors. Oops. If you get outside your lines, you can wipe it right off immediately if you catch it right away. I don't know if that one there came from, but this one right there. There we go. And if you kind of save a little bit of your background color, you can always go back in and fix any boo-boos that you have later, too. As I get around the side here, I'm going to add a little bit more of the lighter color. There we go. Let's 
add just a little bit of that lighter color right along here too. Just brighten that up right there. Okay, and then this petal. Get that ultramarine blue purple mixture and add a little bit of the unbleached or the light ultramarine blue to it. I'm going to pull this out just a little bit more over the top of this other one. A little bit of water to my brush. There we go. And if you've got too much of that lighter color in your brush and you're not getting a good dark color, you can just clean out your brush and start fresh with some dark color here. And let's grab some of that light ultramarine blue. We'll blend up this way. Just going back and forth until I kind of get these two to blend for me. Adding a little bit of water to my brush will help. There we go. Really not adding water to the paint. I'm more, more concerned about keeping my brush hydrated because the brush once it gets dry it just won't blend for you um, but you kind of want to keep your paints fairly thick for the blending so we don't want to water them down some of that darker ultramarine blue here and I'm gonna pull up from the center grab some of the light ultramarine blue blend back down it's gonna look like a hot mess at first especially because we're using such a small brush but Gonna work quickly. I'm using that edge of my brush to kind of create some lines in that paint. The lines are probably the trickiest part of it, so if you want to save those to the very end after you've done your blending, that might make it a little bit easier. What are you laughing at? So somebody was looking for the traceable for this and oh. said that it'll be up sometime after the show on their Patreon site. Right. Either tonight or maybe possibly tomorrow, depending on how hungry I am. <laughs> well, now Chad is like, you need to take her out to dinner. Oh, I like wanna, that idea. Now they want to know where I'm taking you out to dinner. I like it. Thank you, Chad. So which drive through do you want to go through? <laughs> what did we have? Chick-fil-A last night, right? <laughs> you had Chick-fil-A. I had McDonald's. Oh, that's right. It, it was our date night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it really, we were being bad parents and leaving our son to the <laughs> football game by himself. <laughs> Since he wasn't marching, we were like, yes, <laughs> we don't have to go. <laughs> it was cold last night, too. 
but then what did we do? We didn't go anywhere and do anything but get fast food and We sit. ate fast food and then snacked on leftover Halloween candy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> While watching Netflix. We are so wild. <laughs> it, was, it was a party, you know, the, of, <laughs> of a YouTube star. The, <laughs> the lifestyle is just crazy. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I know. I'm getting crazy up in here. <laughs> Might have watched a little Netflix. I don't know. I slept into like seven this morning. <laughs> Just like all over the place. That's that is late for you. Man. <laughs> all right, I think I'm gonna use a little tiny bit of green. Now we're gonna have to be real careful with this because we don't want it to like turn our flower green. But I think I want a little touch of green in my highlight up here. And I'm going to mix it with this ultramarine blue. So it's not solid, you know, phthalo green with this ultramarine blue. But I've got white and ultramarine blue, light ultramarine blue. And yeah, I like that. Just so we're not like doing all the same, same, same colors. Let's get a few new colors working in here. That's pretty. Okay. Let's add a little bit of it. I'm trying to see if there's any, maybe over here on this one. It's just places where the light hits it differently and you'll have just little different cast to the color of your highlights. It just gives a little bit more realism. And then we'll add a little bit of pink that we mixed up here. Pull some of that pink down. Just a touch. that color on and then we can wipe our brush off Whoop. get some of that glazing liquid and pull along that edge with the glazing liquid kind of blend down there we go I have to work quickly with it but you know how you can kind of see the difference there. It's very subtle, but you know, got a little pink there. I've got a little bit of this green over here. Just kind of adds a little something different. And I think I'll even make a little bit of phthalo blue with white. Phthalo blue is so highly that's such a high tinting strength. You have just a teeny, teeniest bit of it with white. It just makes this very vibrant color. There we go. So let's use a little bit of that down in here. Maybe. This area right here. I'm gonna blend in that green slightly. Brighten up that edge. And then get some of that I've got quite a bit of it. I've got a thick coat of it and I'm going to put 
that kind of right here in the middle. This is that light ultramarine blue. Now, if you're blending and you get it to where it's lifting off the color underneath, um, you need to stop blending immediately and just let that dry because what will happen is it will just keep growing and growing. The area that's lifted will, will spread. It's kind of like a virus almost in your paint. And what's happening is the color underneath is starting to dry. So once it starts to dry, acrylics get sticky and they'll just stick to your brush and they'll lift right off the canvas. So just have to kind of be aware of that while you're working. Make sure that you're not lifting your color off. And a little bit of purple and quinacridone magenta together. A little bit of that ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue is definitely our base color for our flower, so almost everything is going to be kind of mixed in with a little bit of that. This will give us a little bit more of a lavender tone. I think I'm going to put it right in here. And if you're concerned about blending or you kind of want to get some, um, you know, techniques more in depth, um, I definitely would recommend looking at the video that I just did a couple weeks ago, um, actually on Halloween night, um, called Blending with Acrylics with Different Kinds of Acrylics. It's just a like a 40-minute video. It shows how to blend with craft acrylics and heavy body acrylics and uh, student quality acrylics that are kind of right in between the two. And it shows different different ways of blending dry brushing and wet on wet and glazing and um, it's just real, real short, but it kind of might help with a project like this if you're struggling with the blending aspect of it. So I am gonna go in kind of fast over it today. Trying to get this done in a reasonable amount of time. So, hashtag feed mark. <laughs> Should I make you take me out to the Italian gardens? Hmm. I, I guess we could do that. I guess I'd have to get out of my pajamas then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'd have to get out of my stretchy pants too. Maybe not. Maybe we should just order pizza then. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> exactly. Then I would have to put on makeup too. Never mind. <laughs> to do my hair. No. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> using this dark color here in the center again. <laughs> You're so lazy on the weekends. That's all right. Lazy all the time. I don't know what I'm talking about. Just, I never want to put put on makeup. Hey, at least you have a job that you don't have to leave the house. Exactly. Exactly. It's perfect. A little bit of water in my brush here. I'm grabbing that kind of light, um, light ultramarine blue, a little bit of that purpley blue mixture as well, the darker color there. Just kind of trying to balloon this out a little bit. And this area here is pretty bright, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the white.
get a little bit more of that light ultramarine blue. Go right in here with that. Kind of to do that transition between the lighter and darker colors. There we go. Just cleaning that up that edge a little bit. And then there is a kind of a little bit, tiny little bit of that front petal peeking through right here. So I'm gonna put that in right here, see if I can get it to show up. Just the leading edge of that petal is kind of peeking right there. Maybe get a little bit of that light pink. Mm. There we go. We we'll use the quinacridone magenta with kind of make it just a slightly different color right there. And you see, I might make use a little bit of it over here too. Petals. It's kind of subtle, but it'll kind of help, I think, separate these petals out. Let's do the same thing with this one here. We may have to go back and put it in again because we're going to be adding more, more colors. Let's add the white. Put the dog to sleep again. You can hear him over there snoring. <laughs> he was singing to a song this morning. I can't remember what song it was. He's gotten into this habit lately. It's pretty funny that he'll... Just certain songs, and I never know which one it's going to be. And he'll just decide he wants to sing along with it and start howling. It's so funny. Got him on video a couple of times, but I don't know if I can put them up anywhere because they've got songs attached. So I don't think that you're allowed to post stuff like that without, you know, the rights to the song, unfortunately. Although I see them all the time on YouTube and stuff, so I don't know how they get away with that. To look into it. Do a montage of Scooter singing to songs, <laughs> different songs. <laughs> okay, there we go. So I went back in here and with the lighter, darker color, just kind of along that edge. What were you going to say? Oh, I wasn't going to say anything. Oh, okay. I thought you started to say something. No. Okay, grabbing that kind of pink purple color here. We'll pull that down, added a little bit of white to it, pull that down in this area for here. Just giving this a second coat. I'm changing the tone of the color just a little bit while we're doing it. So they're not all matchy-matchy, all the petals are subtly different. Kind of all in the same color family, but just slightly different. Need a little bit of water. There we go. Always pointing your brush strokes down towards where you want 
them to go the center of your flower there. And pull back up with some of this darker color. And now that this is dry, I'm going to add a little bit of this darker, some more veins into this area here. Just with that edge of my brush. He's being really loud today. I can hear him over here. I don't know if you can hear him on the recording, but. Really no, I, I can leave my mic on if you want me to so you can hear him. <laughs> yeah. Just do it real quick. that lighter color here and I'm going to put in some veins in the lighter color right in this area. And let's do some on this one too. Grab some of that white, mix it with this like purple pink color we've got going on. This is actually third coat on this one, but I'm definitely wanting this punched up nice and bright right here on this petal. I'm gonna put that on and just turn that brush to its side and kind of let it streak a little bit. So, uh, we Guess noticed uh -huh. we noticed earlier that you uh, painted right up to the edges. Right. So, if somebody was going to frame this, about how much space would they need to leave around the the edges of the canvas? Um, I would say about a quarter inch. Usually about a finger width, so it could be about a half inch maybe. Up to that much will be covered up by a can by a frame if you were to frame it. Okay, getting this lighter pink color here. And we're gonna go along this edge. There's not a, not a whole lot of uh, contrast between these two petals here but I will want to leave just a little tiny bit of a line between them just so we can kind of see where one ends and the other starts there we go and then grab that darker color and just sort of go back in here with the edge of my brush and just pull a line between those two petals and then let's do the same thing in between these two over here just a light line Cracking me up. Do you have your mic on? <laughs> Cleaning out my brush here. Grabbing the purple. I think I might want to make a purple with the quinacridone magenta and 
phthalo blue. So it makes a slightly different purple color. We'll use that in our shadows. We'll add a little bit of white. It's a little bit more of a gray purple. It's not a well, it depends on how much, I guess, of the pink that you use. We'll use that down here. How are you doing, hon? I'm doing good. You're awfully quiet today. Yeah, well, not much going on over here. Good. People are just, you know, enjoying the painting. Good. You're blending. You're, you know, when they think they're done, it's just a few more layers that just make it really stand out mm -hmm. and become even more realistic looking. Yes. And then there's a lot of food talk. A lot of what? Food talk. Food. Everybody's hungry now that we started talking about lunch. Okay, adding that light color along that edge, and then I'm going to pull from the bottom right along that dark area, picking up that dark color and pulling it back up over the top. So I'm blending those two, and I'm lifting. I'm not pulling all the way to the edge and lifting. I'm kind of flicking, so it gets that kind of more... Uh, streak to look. Okay, that looks good. Let's go really dark with this color right in here too. Right there, and let's add a little bit of it right in here. And right in here. really probably should have worked from the outside in because it'd be a little bit easier not to have to worry about going over the top of these petals. And, but, you know, you know me. Can't ever do it the right, easy way. <laughs> Can't have that. mixture over here and add a little bit of that light ultramarine blue color to it. We'll use that. So I started out with this phthalo blue color right in here, phthalo blue and quinacridone, and now I'm kind of blending out with a little bit of this ultramarine and dioxazine purple. And then we'll add white, grab that light ultramarine blue, and pull in from this outside edge with that. bit of water just to get it to flow a little bit. There we go.
ultramarine blue. Pull in from the center, from the outside into the center. value color and kind of go between those two and just sort of blend those out a little bit. is actually pretty bright. Grabbing that darker color, pulling the darker back out away from that edge. Get a little bit of the letter color and go back this way again. Usually, I put the light color down, do it this way, put the dark color down, do it this way, and then do the light color down again. And that usually is enough to get it pretty close to where I want it to be. Usually, don't have to do it more than that. You know, of course, I've already got the initial background colors in there too, so that helps. Let's get a little bit of white here mixed with that light ultramarine blue and put that along this edge here and this is starting to dry so it's getting real sticky so it may not blend very well for me Add a little bit of it down in here too fills you can always kind of use your finger to kind of help blend it out too so especially if your background is dry um, you can use your finger that's kind of slightly damp and just kind of wipe those edges those uh, wet edges off and they'll blend right out for you a little trick. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, I think. Maybe a little bit brighter right along this bottom edge here. just kind of help smooth that out. You could also use glazing liquid instead of water. There we go. Okay, that's looking pretty good, I think. Let's use that quinacridone magenta. Mix with a little bit of light ultramarine blue. And 
Just do it right along this edge here. I'm going to outline the separation between those two petals and clean up this edge here too. And this one as well. There you go. All right, now one more petal to go. We're almost done. We got a question. Yes. And I lost it. <laughs> Hold okay. on. Uh, somebody wants to know if that's a nylon brush. This, uh, you know what? I'm not sure. I think it's white taclon. But yes, it's synthetic. And it's it's a Princeton Summit. And it's got a really good spring to it. It's It's fairly firm. So it makes it easier to do these kind of blending things that I like to do with it. All right, so adding a little bit more of the quinacridone magenta to this thalo blue mixture that I've got over here, and I'm going to use that kind of violet color down in here on this petal. And then grab some of that white and blue. Red ultramarine blue there. Mix that back over through it. Pick up a little bit of water, wipe the other color off my brush. Picking up that darker color again. Let's streak those two together, blend those to get together a little bit. There we go. And I want that really dark color right in here. So I'm going to go back through and just kind of add a little bit of that really dark color right along there. Try to pull that out just a little bit. All the way along that line there. There we go. value color there. Blend those out right there. This area's a little bit tricky right there. Give a little bit of water. It's not wanting to blend for me. There we go. Picked up a little bit of ultramarine blue there. press this color off of my brush under the canvas. This is that kind of pink color. Quinacridone and thalo blue. Just get that off of the brush. Mostly. You pick up a little bit of it with some water or glazing liquid. Let's glaze up here with that color. Yeah, just a little bit of that glow quickly up there. There we go. This is just that light ultramarine blue with a little bit of water. I just kind of Moving out these transition areas here. Okay, looking good. I'll grab a little bit more of that light ultramarine blue and do it along this edge right here. Wipe off the extra. 
This is very watery here. A little bit of heavier paint there. There we go. Wipe off the extra. We use that dry brush to kind of pull that color down. I'm doing all kinds of different techniques here so I would just say do what seems to work the best for you you don't have to do you know find a technique that works best for you and then use that on all of the the whole thing you know you don't have to do it exactly the way I'm doing it I'm kind of switching up the way I'm blending from petal to petal just to kind of give you a few different ways of doing it Light ultramarine, or light ultramarine, and dioxazine purple here. And pull. Now, really, this area is fairly light, so I'm going to go back over it with that light ultramarine blue here. There we go. some white with the light ultramarine blue. It's not super bright, but it's it is kind of brighter than I've got it here, I think. There we go. color right along that edge there. That kind of blends in. And we'll do a little bit of that color up here and pull it out this way. I was just thinking about okay there you go how much you would be making of your being painted uh being paid by the stroke there <laughs> this one yeah this one would be a lot of a lot of moolah mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely a lot of a lot of blending grabbing some white here with the unbleached or light ultramarine blue I'm not sure if I'm going to use the unbleached titanium today. I didn't really. Probably could have used it to. Let's try changing out some of the color here. Let me use a little bit of ultramarine blue with that light ultramarine or unbleached titanium with the ultramarine blue. Maybe a little bit of purple. Color. Kind of a neutral color. Let me put it 
back in here. this color on this one. Awesome. Hey, we got a super chat super if you chat. didn't know. Nice. Yeah, from C5 Dave. And uh, it says, learning a ton and enjoying every bit. Awesome. Thank you. You are so welcome. Thank you very much for your donation. Very much. And you know, all the people in chat mooing. <laughs> Moo. <laughs> Cowbell. <laughs> Spencer was saying that uh, he got bonus points in school. Uh, this week, because one of his teachers uh, said, "said you, yeah, anybody who can finish this sentence will get bonus points." And uh, she said, "I got a fever, and the only prescription is." And Spencer looked around. He's like, uh, "More cowbell?" <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, "Yes." Nobody all day has gotten that. Yeah. You get bonus points. He's the only one to get it. He's the only one all day. I was like, what is the world coming to? See, People are not teaching their kids right. We know that we're parenting right. Exactly. <laughs> oh, goodness. Those are the things that are important to know in life. Exactly. It was, it was a proud moment. <laughs> so funny. Okay, so I think I'm liking that. It's looking pretty good. I got some dimension there. Got kind of these petals looking like they're coming forward. I think uh, maybe along this one here that's kind of pointing straight at us, maybe put a little bit brighter highlight right along that front edge there. Let's try that and see if we can make it pop forward even more. Grab some white. A little bit of our light ultramarine blue. Make it pretty, pretty vibrant there. And I'm just gonna use it right along that edge. I draw. Look at how that's already kind of popping it forward. Makes it look like the light's catching that. Just kind of lightly blending that out. That makes it turn look like it's turned even more up towards us. I'll do the same thing with this one right here. A little bit of bright pop right there. That's curling that up. those petals up now that way. Having these light highlights. There we go. Let's do 
do a little bit over here again, even more brightness. We want to get these petals exactly the way I want them so that once we get our centers on, we don't have to mess with them anymore. We don't want to have to try to work around our center part of our flower. So I'm just going to work on getting these highlights in here just exactly the way we want them to be. Use a little bit of the cloth and there. Wipe that off. What? I was going to say the uh, the hashtag side cam really kind of shows how curvy those petals look. Yeah. You know the three D effect. More than. Let's do a little bit more up in here on this one. That leading edge is real bright. There we go. And just be careful that you blend that out so you don't have like an outline. I mean, sometimes you will have an outline like like this when it's when it's completely facing you and you're seeing the edge of the petal. So, but in this case, it's flat, so we're not gonna want to see like an outline. Okay, a little bit more right here. Really bright, bright white. starting to curl more white right here. More right here. For some reason this area is getting some light. You don't know why? Well, just for some I mean, reason. It, well, it, the way it's setting, you would think that it would be in the shadow, but it's just the way this flower is tilted. That area is in the light. It's just what you said it is. Like, you know. <laughs> who knows why, but it is. So. It is. It's in the picture, so I'm just doing what it's showing me. <clears throat> Another super chat. Wow. Another, Another super chat. I hope if I turn my mic on. This one's from <laughs> Denise says, thank you, Angela, for your tutorials. I have learned a lot with you also, so I am doing my part. Oh, It's about you. time. <laughs> oh, sweet. Thank you so much. She said that. I didn't say that. It's hard. about time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for those who are watching this in the future. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah. said that. Yeah, it's about time, Denise. I know. Come on, really? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I was going to say that's kind of rude, honey. <laughs> it is free, you know. <laughs> Not like we're asking. 
Okay, putting a little streak in there. Well, this is just kind of adding a little bit of extra detail here, just some little streaks and different things. These petals have a lot of veining in them, so I mean, if you want to get real fancy, you could get out your liner brush and put in some veins. Even I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go that detailed with it, but I definitely could see, you know. Uh, We'll do, we'll do, we'll do a couple, I say, I'm not going to, but we'll do a couple. We'll get a liner brush and some light, very light watered down paint and just put in some of these veins here. This is totally optional. And I really would only do it in these center ones here that are kind of our focal point. Make sure you're using a very thin brush so you get fine lines on your veins. And if you get them where you really hate it and you feel like it doesn't look good, can always paint over it and go back over with some of the like watered down middle value color and just kind of brush over it slightly kind of tone it down and set it back into the flower slightly make it look like it's part of the I would definitely kind of probably do that anyways. It just kind of softens up those veins and make them look like they're a little bit more part of the whole. Okay. All right, so now let's do the center here. I'm going to get a little bit bigger brush and get the doxazine purple and I think I'm going to use the thalo blue this time with it. I like that. And we're going to make our little flower centers. So I'm going to start real close to that middle part that we've already done and start tapping in and I've got a oh, one inch round or one number one round I should say it's about a I don't know eighth inch round something like that and I'm gonna start tapping in our center and it's actually not going right up against it on this side so as I go out I'm gonna keep all of these kind of pointing in towards the center so these ones are kind of laying this way pointing in towards the center and then as I come around it's going to go straight and then as I come around like this I'm turning my brush as I go around that's what I'm saying so you get the idea Then I want to grab a little bit of white here on this brush and I'm going to do some little streaks from that center part if we did our dark our center dark enough we shouldn't have to add any more of the dark color, but we do want to add a little bit of this lighter color. Just some little streaks from the center out. I probably should have done that first. Grab my purple color. Go in with that. Actually, let's get some ultramarine blue. And streak in between. Just trying to make some little lines. 
sound like that. You see that? Maybe even grab some of that pink. Actually, let me switch back to my smaller brush here. I think I'll have an easier time of it. Alright, let's got some little bit of pink and white here. Because Patricia asked so nicely. <laughs> Much easier to see now. Okay, now I'm going to get that bigger brush back. And these are going to come out pretty far, so I'm going to go ahead and bring them out. There's like three layers of them right here, so. There we go. And as you come around here, they get real close to the center part. You're not seeing these lines all the way around. It's just in this bottom area. And then the top part here is... Good. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. Let's do... Get some burnt sienna here. Mix a little bit of that unbleached titanium with it. And I still have this purple color in my brush, so it's kind of blending. And uh, I think I want to use my Deerfoot stippler. Let's see how this does. I don't know. We may decide we want to do this with the brush. Uh, I don't know if I like that. get a little bit of each color on there. See if we can get it to work for us. Get some of that darker purple, a little bit of the burnt umber or burnt sienna, and a little bit of that unbleached titanium. Mm. Nah, I don't like that. I think I'd rather do the do it by hand, sorry. Just had to try it. shaped. Bring it up a little bit higher. There we go. Okay, so let's use this pink Magenta and white mixed with our purple. And I'm going to make teeny tiny little dots. Making sure that I'm still seeing that purple in between. There we go. That's good. 
And as I get down here, I can kind of actually pull slightly longer. It really would help if I had a thinner brush. But you get the idea. Okay, now when I get down here, I want to add some of that burnt sienna color. Pull it, wrap it around the side a little bit. Get my smaller brush here. more white. We're going to make some really bright right there in the center. Pull that center forward. There we go. Okay, I think I'm liking that. Let's grab some of that yellow oxide. Maybe add just a tiny bit of that yellow oxide down on some of these. Just a little hint of it. And that yellow will really make that purple contrast pop. Because yellow and purple are opposite on the color wheel, so they will complement each other really well. They're called complementary colors, actually. Probably for that reason, I'm guessing. Um, grabbing a little bit more of that dark purple. I'm just going to add some of that back in. Uh, what brush are you using right now? This is the number two over zero, two odd. Okay, there we go. Much better. I think now it looks like kind of domed a little bit just by putting that white bit right in the center there and a little bit darker along the bottom. Magic of paint, I love it. All about illusion. Got a little bit of that unburnt uh, ultramarine blue. And add some of that down here. The the unburnt blue? Uh, yeah, unburnt blue. <laughs> I think that's a new color. I know, I think so too. I'll have to write that put down. Put a little bit of it on this, bot, this side of the center. Shade that side slightly. And then we're just going to add a little bit of highlight to our centers of our flower here. Well, some of them are, I'm going to press my brush flat so it's got that shape that I'm looking for. Uh, see how it's kind of flattened out? And I'm going to use it to pull, this is unbleached titanium. I'm just going to pull a few petals with this color. <clears throat> Very small ones. And then, the, really only a few of them in that color. And then I'm going to grab some of this ultramarine blue. Mix that with it. And do some with that color. And find my, find my little petals that I've got already there. And I'm just adding this highlight on top of them. Pulling towards the center. So setting it down and lifting, kind of pulling towards the center to highlight some of these like that and that'll make them look kind of stacked up on, on top of each other and I don't have to do all of them 
but just enough. Maybe get a little bit brighter highlight on a few of them. Just maybe grab a little bit more of that white. Maybe like right in here, get some one that's really bright. Maybe down in here. some of these so I'm gonna grab some of that yellow oxide mix that with my white it's still got that blue in it so it's kind of toned down the color a little bit not completely yellow do some of the, yeah, that color and let's put a little bit of this color in the center too just to tie it in the stage of the painting where you're getting almost I almost don't want it to end I was like it's the it's the best feeling I don't know it's addicting so I think that's what brings me back to painting every time this this part of the painting every time it's like it's that magic part where it's just like yes 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 it's working <laughs> it looks so pretty I love it Not every painting gives you that feeling. <laughs> Sometimes some work better than others. <laughs> Sometimes you're cursing the painting at this point because it's fighting you and you're still not quite getting it exactly the way you want it to, but hopefully, not this one, hopefully we're, we worked it through. Got you through. I'm adding a little bit of uh, the ultramarine blue and white here. Just kind of giving different colors to our Little, little petals here. Let me grab a little bit of the darker blue. Put in a few more with some darker blue. gonna have to stop so but uh, I'm gonna get some of that darker purple there and I'm gonna make sure I have good lines going into my center there I feel like it's still not quite dark enough right there right at the base add some real real dark purple right along that base of it shadow that in There's some dark. Darkness on some of these petals down here. If you've gotten them where they're too, uh, too many or too close together, you can always kind of go back over with this purple color and kind of separate out some of them. I think it's looking pretty good. Add a little bit of white and purple to some of these. We did blue and purple, or do blue and white, and yellow. We'll do a little bit of violet, lavender on a few of these. There we go. help finish it off.
Okay, zoom out there, honey. Let me look at it from afar on the camera there and see how it looks. Uh, I think. Yeah, I like it. I think that I want to bring this part up of, up here a little bit. So maybe put one up here. Just bring it up right around there. Maybe bring it up right in here too. Bring it out slightly wider. Grab some of that violet color and highlight those. There we go. It's so pretty. <laughs> Don't you love it? Blue flowers. Those are my favorite. I This was called a blue anemone poppy. So I don't know if it's a, technically a poppy. It's definitely looks like a poppy to me. But it it was it was coming up on a search as a blue poppy. So I get, I'm calling it blue poppy. So if I'm if I got that wrong, I'm sorry. I'm gonna blame Google for that. <laughs> I'm just making a little bit irregular so it wasn't so perfectly round just kind of adding a few outside the edges so that it's kind of a little bit more irregular but uh, yeah I really I like it I think it looked, turned out pretty good it's got all this kind of good streaking happening and our center is really the focal point there added a lot of detail to it really draws your eye in and let me use let me see. I guess I'll use my brush to sign it this time. Let's see if I can find a brush that will work for it. If you're using your brush to sign, you want to add a lot of water to your paint. Thin it down. Get a good, very, very thin brush to use and make sure that you go at least a finger's width away from the edge there. And I hold it really close to the end so that I can get so I can kind of almost use it like a pen. But you always want to lead a lead the brush you don't want to try to push it so you kind of have to hold your brush right up over the top of it so that you can get a good uh it's kind of curved around the pedal i like that chat is blowing up with amazing oh. how, how much they love it good i love it too i think it turned out really pretty mm. really pretty but you know what they would love more than a blue poppy what stick man with a blue poppy stick man Oh, I, I can't get. It. I was looking for. Her. <laughs> oh, I'm glad my. I'm glad I have a high neck shirt. You'd be <laughs> looking right down my shirt right there. My <laughs> shot. <laughs> Just bending over into the camera. <laughs> Hashtag. Thank goodness. <laughs> thank okay, goodness. I'll watch back. Crew neck, you don't Hashtag crew neck shirts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep, for sure. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, mean, it, it, I looked up and I saw it was just like right there. It was all in the shot there. It would, that could have gone That's real funny. bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll make us a blue puppy here on our... Where do we want to put it? I don't know. We don't have room. We've got a... What What did we do over here? There's a, there's a blue flower here. <laughs> what did we do? I don't know what I, that's I from. Know. Is that from... I'm not sure. It looks like a blue flower right there. Okay, we'll fit it in right here. We'll just do a kind of a blue poppy right in here. Okay, so we might have to go with Stickman 4.0. Yeah, it's time for you to draw a new Stickman, I think. Okay. I did one, uh, but I think I threw it away. I did one at Crystal Bridges, but yeah. people were calling it an imposter. So exactly. I was afraid of posting it or doing anything with it. So. <laughs> <laughs> gotta be marks that's right 
It's He's the one thing I do. The original. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the one and only. Okay, so we did, well, I guess we did use the yellow green. We did not use the yellow. We did not use the black. We did use the burnt umber in the background, but we didn't use it on the flower. So, okay, so there's our blue poppy. We'll give it a, We'll give it a little stem so it looks like it's kind of growing up behind the, there we go. He's growing up behind the pumpkin there. Yep, I think beautiful, we're full. Beautiful, <laughs> I think yeah. It, I think it's, he got to... wings that, <laughs> so bad. <laughs> it looks like hair. It does look like hair. hair. It looks like really, I don't know what happened there. Poor guy. All right, so <laughs> okay. I got a new task. Yeah, you get a new task before next week, so. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. We so appreciate you sticking up, sticking around with us for two and two hours and 15 minutes this time. That's mm -hmm. not, actually not bad for one of our flower paintings. We've gone a lot longer. Or the peony, I think, was over almost three over three hours. So, anyhow, all right, uh, we will be back on Tuesday. Let me show you if I can find it. What we're going to be painting Tuesday night? We'll be doing this uh, kind of watercolory type thing. So, if you're going to paint along with me, uh, you want to either get some watercolor paper. You can use your uh, mixed media pad that I did mine out of, or uh, use a. Uh, acrylic ground it's called Let me find the bottle there absorbent ground and paint that on your canvas give it a couple coats let it dry overnight and uh, if you're going to paint along with us have that ready so for Tuesday night all right we'll see you then thanks guys please uh, give it a thumbs up like subscribe all that good stuff and if you want the traceable for this it'll be available on my patreon page and the link for that is down in the description. Uh, but you can go to patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art to find it as well. All right. Thanks. See you next time.